Feather brushes are a fantastic compostable alternative to regular brushes. Other than stroke and pressure control, which comes with learning anything new, I prefer my feather fine liner over my synthetic hair, as I am less likely to bend the tip and have more even, consistent lines and control. They only work with watercolor, gouache, and the most exceptional with ink. Other than all the information you'll need to create one yourself, including care, I will be demonstrating the brushes in the creation of this portrait. You can use repurposed brush handles, bamboo, driftwood, bones, pencils, sticks, and more to make your brush. Today, I went to forge a stick. Now, to get a stick in the most ethical and least disturbing way to the earth, you must locate the Big Mama stick. Intimidation obviously does not work, and she starts cursing the bloodline. Give her a little fisty cuff to show who she's messing with. Then wreck havoc, making you feel like a thousand chainsaws at once with the force of your feeble hands. If that doesn't phase her, assault with a knife time. The big freaking tip, don't laugh and film yourself committing murder as this takes they take it seriously. As a cop sure didn't like that when they showed up. Beep boop. With your sticks, if you're forging them from a beach or the woods, make sure they are straight, sturdy, and have a strong inner core, as sometimes they can be soft or rotten on the inside. Trim the edges if needed. And if you find yourself struggling with this, because sometimes I do, remember your past crimes you've committed, and that will help bring out the strength and vigorous anger to finish the job. With the sticks trimmed, using a blade, safely carve away any bark or nodules you desire gone. Depending on how your stick looks and the aesthetic you'd like, skip this step completely. Optionally, this is when you can carve in any pattern, design, shape, etc. Here I am showing a very basic one just as a demonstration. After you're done carving, it is your choice to round off the base of the handle, keep it flat, or carve in small notches to have a geometric-like shape. Do whatever creative ideas come to you. Here's how the stick looks complete so far. And following, I'm just demonstrating getting rid of a nodule. This can be very difficult and at sometimes dangerous so make sure that you do this very carefully, slow, if you're having too much difficulty taking it off, sand the nodule down. After you choose to whittle your stick or not, sanding can help bring out colors in the wood, create a smoother surface to hold while painting, and help with the oil adhere to it better. Here are the products that I used. It is just a combination of beeswax polish and natural, non-toxic oil made from plants specifically for chopping boards. This is just what I have on hand. Beeswax polish is the main component here. That will give a much nicer feel and finish to your brush that will be more permanent than just the oil by itself. Depending on your stick like this one, if you're using an old paintbrush handle, bone, or decide to paint your stick, skip the prior step. If you plan to use bamboo, I highly recommend it. It is very durable, has a hole at the top and bottom, perfect for the feather brush insert, and adding a string loop at the base. Process is identical to the stick if you want to modify your bamboo. I lucked out and found mine as trash on the beach as well as it being given away for free by a gardener. Here I am rounding off the top where the feather will be inserted. Now if you don't have access to any of these, you can just use a pencil or an old paintbrush handle you wish to repurpose, following the same steps as before if you'd like to. Regarding feathers, the quality of them dictate the quality of your brush. 
so they must be genuine and not from a craft store. Even if the shop happens to be providing a good quality feather, I personally do not support it. If you have the option to forge them at a forest or on a beach and clean them afterwards, I recommend that. Of course, you have to use what you have available. To create a detailing brush tip, double the length from where you plan to cut so you can discard half of the barbs. This will give enough space to be inserted into your handle without warping your bristles. Then remove the barbs on the other side. And as a reference, if this happens to you, this is how much an untrimmed brush would distort if it was being put directly into the ferrule. For a chisel brush, follow the steps prior, but cut the tip at an angle using a pair of scissors. Now hopefully visually seeing the other brush options, it is self-explanatory. You can be very creative with the style of brush you want, so do not be limited by the selection that I show you. To make the ferrule and protective casing, if you decide to make a fine tip detail brush, cut the hollow section of the calamus in two parts, making sure to use a needle or a toothpick to clean out the inside. Sometimes the tip can be bent, which, if it is a small enough hole, easily fixed by cutting it off. To make sure your ferrule fits your handle snugly, slowly carve the top, sanding if necessary consistently checking along the way. If your ferrule cracks a little bit putting it on, which happened to me, it is perfectly alright, as you will be gluing it down. You may also need to carve down your feather a little bit to fit into the ferrule. This isn't always necessary. Now regarding glue, I'm using this as it is all I have on hand to demonstrate, but if you want your brush to be compostable, please do not. Non-toxic or labeled biodegradable glue is not always a viable option. For details why, I have linked below an article explaining it in detail, including other alternative eco-friendly glue options. With your glue of choice, dip the bare end of your brush tip into it and insert it into the ferrule. After then gluing down the ferrule to the handle, it is done, but for better structural support, take some cotton, hemp, or other biodegradable cord and saturate it in your glue, wrapping it around the ferrule. To finish it off, snip the tip, but also add some extra glue at the top for support. If your handle is smooth wood and you got any glue on it, you can sand it off and reapply some oil. If you are using bamboo, you can skip the step of even needing to create a ferrule. And here is how the protective casing looks on the brush. Optionally, for fun, you can turn a regular brush into one with a more customized handle by simply cutting off the ferrule till it is hollow and using the same steps to make it perfectly fit onto your new handle. Lastly, for the base, you can add a string loop or use a bead cap and chain to hang your brush. And you are pretty much done. Here was my first ink painting trying the brushes, as well as a small demonstration on how the brush holds ink. Today, however, I wanted to see if I could use watercolor and gouache, and here was my experience doing so. It was very interesting. 
Certainly, the waterproof nature of the feather is what makes it work so well with ink, but a bit of a struggle if you want to cover large areas in watercolor and gouache and expect it to have the exact same function as a brush design for watercolor. However, the patchy effect it created I quite liked and wasn't an issue for me to either fix or slowly layer on top of. These brushes are best used for fine detailing and to add distinctive character in your strokes. Anything beyond that is an experiment or may come with some risk. It is a learning process in of itself to adjust to how the brushes move and how much pressure to apply. As if I did it wrong, it would bend or twist in a way I didn't intend to, which can be either frustrating if you're not used to it, or perfect using to your advantage. To care for your brushes, do not let them soak in water ever. Dip and swirl them, removing access with a cloth, reshaping the barb so they do not dry and become deformed. When it comes to disposing your brush, if the beeswax is biodegradable as well as the glue and you've either cut the feather tip off if there's paint buildup you cannot remove, chuck it anywhere. It should hopefully be fine. It should be fine. It's just, it's just a twig, brush, and some sticky stuff. If you want to support my work, or rather buy instead of make one, I do personally sell my feather brushes individually or in complete sets. Individual brush listings, I sell the handle, so you'll just see the handle and not the finished tip, because I would prefer whoever is buying it chooses what kind of brush they want. So I'm never selling a brush and it is a pretty handle, but not the desired needs of the person, and I'm just limiting the people I can be selling to. When I craft my brushes for sale, they are often a lot more artistically focused refined pieces than the ones I shared in this video as just example brushes. If there's none currently for sale on my website, feel free to contact me through there or Instagram as I will happily do custom orders if I have the time. With that said, have a lovely rest of your day.